بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وزكى التسليم على المبوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to أصول الفقه class Today inshallah we will have very important topic and it is related directly to أصول الفقه and it's very important to understand the topic of today it is about what we call الدلالات and this is the second phase of the rules of interpretation. <clears throat> Ad-dalala. Dalalat jam dalala. And dalala in general could mean indication. And that's why we say dalil, evidence. We have dalalat, which are connotations. You say a word, what's the connotation? What's the implication of this word? So this is what we will discuss, the textual implications. Now, we have several levels according to the strength. Again, just like we talked about the levels of the words themselves, of their clarity and in clarity, we have vahir, khafi, nas, the same thing here. We have Dilalat al Nas, we have Iqtida al Nas, we have Mafhum al Nas. All these are Dalalat. And based on each one of them, the ruling is different. What do we mean by this? You may understand from one ayah a ruling, but you understand from the other ayah a different ruling. So here you will have contradiction, which one you take. According to the strength, of the dalala that you have. Now we need to remember something very important. The nas, the text of the ayah itself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is halal. What is halal exactly? What's the application of this halal? To what extent? Does that mean whatever beyond it haram? The work actually more with the implication of the text, not the text itself, because the text itself is clear. But what's beyond that, that's where the work of the student of knowledge, the mujtahid, the scholar, comes in. So we have levels of textual implications. The first level is ibarat al nas. And this is the only time I'll translate it. After that, you need to know the Arabic term. Ibarat al nas. What do we mean by ibarat al nas? The explicit meaning. That's the direct meaning, ibarat al-nas. And this is the strongest one. Then we have isharat al-nas, alluded meaning. The first one is explicit, it is direct. There is no if or but. The second one, isharat al-nas. There is indication. The text alluded to that meaning. Then we have Dalalat nas the inferred meaning, or what we call it in the Shafi'i school of thought, Mafhum al Muwafaqa. Mafhum al Muwafaqa. That's what we call Dalalat nas Then we have Iqtida al nas Iqtida al nas required meaning, or what the text requires of a meaning. The text itself is clear. But you cannot understand it this way. You have to accept something added to it. Iqtida al nas So again, we have ibarat al nas online. Are you with me? We have ibarat al nas Second, we have isharat al nas Third, we have dalalat al nas And fourth, we have iqtida al nas Now, all these implications, all these dalalat are agreed upon by all scholars. All scholars agreed on these implications, on these dalalat. There is another dalala which is called mafhum al-mukhalafa. This is close to number three. Number three, mafhum al-muwafaqa. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is halal. Let's say, for instance, just as an example, Allah said, you are allowed to pay $10 in charity. 
If Allah said that you are allowed to pay $10 in charity, that means, according to number three, if it's more than $10, is it allowed or no? Whatever you give in charity, it is allowed. But at least it has to be $10. So if it's more than $10, is it allowed or no? It is better. So that's مفهوم الموافقة. What about less than ten dollars? Now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said ten dollars is allowed. That's مفهوم المخالفة. The divergent meaning. That's مفهوم المخالفة. The Hanafi school schools of uh, school of thought, Hanafi scholars, disapproved this one, the last one, مفهوم المخالفة. While the majority of scholars approved it with conditions, and this is by itself is a separate issue. We will talk to about it, inshallah, in a in a later session, because we could barely cover the previous ones. So we will start with the first one, ibarat al nas, or actually before that, let's read the introduction to this topic from the book, page one seventy six. I'm sorry, page 167, not 176, page 167. The <clears throat> rules of interpretation, ad-dalalat, textual implications. <clears throat> the, law normally requires comp the law normally requires compliance not only with the obvious meaning of its text, but also with its implied meanings and indirect indications and inferences that could be drawn from them. Okay, this is very important. Again, do not think that the, the rulings are only when you read an ayah and that's the ruling from the ayah. That's what everyone understands. I'll give you just an example. Someone said, Muhammad came to the class. Okay? Muhammad came to the class. This is just an example. What do you learn from this? Muhammad is in the class, that's the first meaning, that's ibarat al-nas. If someone asked, Muhammad today did not go to the coffee shop, what do you call this? Do you know if he went to the coffee shop or not? Do you know if he went to the coffee shop or not? How do you know? Because he said he didn't go to the shop. Did I say he didn't go to the shop? I said he came to class. Maybe he went to the coffee shop and then he came to class. Maybe he didn't. So that's the thing that you're, you're looking for. That's, that's what we, you need to understand. Because maybe he went to the coffee shop, but then he came to class. However, maybe the time does not allow this. So that means, although it's not in the text, that means automatically he did not go to the coffee shop. This is again, this is just an example. And we will take the examples from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger So actually the work is not only with the text itself, but with what complies with the text. Okay, go on. With reference. With reference to the textual rulings of the Quran and the Sunnah, the ulama of Usul have distinguished several shades of meaning that has a nas. That, um, th that, that has a nas that may be oh, capable. That a nas may be capable of, capable of imparting. The Hanafi jurists have distinguished four levels of meaning in an order which begins with the explicit or immediate meaning of the text. Next, in this order is the alluded meaning, which is followed by the inferred meanings, and lastly, by the required meaning. There is yet a fifth variety of meaning, namely the divergent meaning, which is somewhat controversial but has, in principle, been accepted as our discussion will show. The explicit meaning, ibarat an nas, nas, which is based on the words and sentences of the text, is the dominant and most authoritative meaning. Just like the definitive in regards to the words, definitive word, it has no other possibility. So it is the strongest one. The most authoritative meaning, which takes priority over other levels of implied meanings that might be detectable in the text. In addition to its obvious meaning, a text may impart a meaning which is indicated by the signs and allusions that it might contain. 
This secondary meaning is re referred to as ishara tanafs. That is the alluded meaning. A text, a legal text, may also convey a meaning which may not have been indicated by words or signs, and yet is a complementary meaning warranted by the logical and juridical purport of the text. This is known as the laratun nas or the inferred meaning, which is one degree below the alluded meaning by virtue of the fact that it is essentially extraneous to the text. But as will later be discussed, there is a difference of opinion between the Hanafi and the Shafi'i jurist as to whether the inferred meaning should necessarily be regarded as inferior to the alluded meaning. Next in this order is or the required meaning, which is once again a logical and necessary meaning without which the text would remain incomplete and would fail to achieve its desired purpose. Okay, this is the introduction for all these dalalat with the definitions. Each one of them is defined, but we will start separately with each one of them. First, we have ibaratun nas. Someone asked you, you studied usul al-fiqh. What's the meaning of Ibaratun Nas? What do you mean? Ibaratun Nas is the immediate meaning of the text derived from its obvious words and sentences. That is Ibaratun Nas. And I will give you now, now the issue is not only with definition but you need to give examples. I will give you an example and tell me where is Ibaratun Nas. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَى This is an example. وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَى Where is عِبَارَةُ النَّصِير? Where is the immediate meaning? What does the text mean? That Allah has allowed uh, the transactions and forbade riba. Yes. Riba is forbidden. That's it, you see, this is the easiest one. Why? Because it's direct. It doesn't require any, any work. Bay' is halal. This is one thing. Riba is haram. Okay? So this is what we call ibaratun nas. Now the book gave an example, and we will discuss it. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْسِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَ فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مثنى وثلاثة وربع. Now, what's عبارة النصير؟ فإن خفتم ألا تعدلوا فواحدة. The last line, if you fear that you cannot treat them equally, then marry only one. Yeah, I don't want you to repeat the text. What's the direct meaning here? Ruling. We are talking about ruling. Just like وأحل الله البيع وحرم ربا. ربا is forbidden. You're allowed to marry more than one. Very good. You are allowed to marry more than one. That's ibaratun nas. What else? But if you can't treat them equally. If you cannot treat women fairly. Then only one. You should marry only one. Okay. Is that difficult? Mm -hmm. This is what we call ibaratun nas. Again, how can you understand better? You have to practice. Look at now. Start from the beginning of the Quran or the ayat that you memorized. And try to apply this. Ibaratun nas is the direct one. It is very simple, very easy. What comes next requires more effort and more understanding. So we will spend a little bit more time with the with the rest of the dalalat. So this is ibaratun nas, the direct, explicit meaning of a word of or text. The next is isharatun nas, which is an indication. The meaning of the text that's not mentioned clearly, but understood directly. You have to understand it directly from the text. Let's go back to the example. If I told you, وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَى Ibaratun nas says that riba is haram. Bay' is halal. What's isharatun nas? What can we learn from this ayah? The text itself did not say it, but you understand it directly. Can someone tell me? Ibaratun nas, riba is forbidden. 
بيع إز حلال إشارة النص Any type of transaction where you're getting more than uh, what it's fair? Any what? Any kind of, uh, I guess, transaction where you're getting more than what's fair would... Getting more than what's fair? I don't know. Remember, you have to have it directly. Now here online we have an example. Do not do riba. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade something, you should avoid it. Riba is haram. Riba is haram, that's ibaratun nas. That's not isharatun nas. Is riba equal to bay? Is riba equal to bay? No. No. Does it say in the text that they are not equal? No. What do we call this? Why? Because we understand when Allah allows something and forbids something, they are different. They are not the same. However, they are mentioned in the same ayah to distinguish. Again, it doesn't require too much effort. It is clear. The book gives an example here. وعلى المولود له رزقهن وكسوتهن بالمعروف. From this ayah, give me إشارة النص. Give me an indication, direct indication. From this ayah. وعلى المولود له. Again, there are at least two or three. At least. This ayah, we studied it in Surah Al-Baqarah. No. This is that of a divorced woman. That's not Isharat al-Nas. That's not... You have to have something direct from the Nas, but it's not mentioned. That the mother is not responsible for the child. child. The mother is not responsible... For taking care of the child's financial, like, uh, food and clothing needs. Okay. That's actually عبارت النص. Who takes care of the uh, provision? The father. The father. The child is called by his mother's name or his father's name? Father's name. Why? Because it says وَعَلَى الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ not وعلى المولود لها. And actually the translation even here is not accurate. But in Arabic, وعلى المولود له. For the one who the child is born to. And that one is male. Now, that's why nowadays no one argues. Your name is so and so. The daughter of or the son of so and so. You mention your father's name. You don't mention your mother's name. This is إشارة النص. And it is direct. For the father of the child. So the child is called after his father's name. Now here, the ayah says that the father shall bear the cost of the mother's food. This is ibarat nas What's isharat nas Regarding provision. Who provides for the child? Who's responsible for the child's provision? The father as well. The father as well. Is it mentioned clearly? No. No. How we understand it? Because if He's providing for the mother. He if he's providing for the mother, she is not child. responsible, so definitely he's responsible for the child. That's isharat nas Could someone come and argue and say, no, no. That's very strong, very clear. Yet it is not as clear as ibarat nas Is this clear? This is isharat nas Next, we have مفهوم الموافقة or what we call دلالة النص. When something is mentioned, that means by necessity, what is greater is already also have the same ruling. I'll give you an example. If the Prophet ﷺ said, one dirham of riba is haram. Okay? One dirham of riba is haram. That means two dirhams of riba are haram or halal? They're haram. Haram, why? Because if one is haram, if one is haram two definitely, yes. by necessity. Yes. 
it entails that two are haram. It doesn't say that. It says one is haram. Maybe two is halal. Could someone say this? I mean, this is dalalat al nas A meaning that is derived through analogy. Now, if one is haram, definitely two is haram. The definition is a bit long. You could choose the one that exactly mentioned in the book in the introduction, or you could choose this one. This one is long, but it's clear. A meaning that is derived through analogy and the identification of an effective cause, which is in common between the explicit meaning and the meaning that is derived, derived through inference. Can you give me an example from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Can you think of an example from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes, like uh, we know that alcohol is haram. So okay, alcohol is haram. What's similar to it is also haram. Which, uh... No, what's similar to it, that's not dalalat al nas okay. It has to be what is stronger to it. You understand? So if Allah says killing one soul equals killing the entire humanity, that means killing two souls is greater than killing one soul. That's mafhum al muwafaqa That's dalalat al nas Example. Students without examples. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Do not tell your parents, even this word, uf, fi, wala tanharhuma. The direct and the explicit meaning, which we call ibaratun nas, says what? You are forbidden from saying uf or mafhum al muwafaqa says what? What entails that something else is forbidden? Hmm? Anything greater than off would be... Awesome. Any greater than off would be forbidden. Very good. Like what? Give me again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade off. That means, by necessity, beating them up is what? It's definitely haram. <laughs> definitely haram. Could someone come and say, no, no, beating them up is, is not haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade only saying off because that may hurt them. How we understand? Now, does the text say you cannot beat them up? No. It doesn't say that. But how we understand it? By necessity. It doesn't require that much intelligence to do it. Is it clear? That's what we call mafhum al muwafaqa The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا بَلَغَ الْمَاءُ الْقُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْمِلُ الْخَبَثِ When the water equals two big pots or two whatever measurement it is. It will not carry filth. What does that mean? By mafhum al muwafaqa Anything more than... The Anything more than two pots, by necessity, will not carry filth. If it's 150 gallons, that means by necessity, 200 gallons will not carry filth. Is it clear? Online? Only Alia and Chaza. Okay. So let's read from the book. Page 169. Um, the alluded meaning? Yes. Okay. The alluded meaning. Isharat al-Nas. The text itself may not be obvious with regard to its alluded meaning, but it imparts, nevertheless, a rationally concomitant meaning that is obtained through further investigation of the signs that might be detectable therein. Since the alluded meaning does not represent the principal theme of the text, and yet embodies a necessary inference, it is called isharatun nafs. The alluded meaning may be easily detectable in the text or may be reached through deeper investigation and ijtihad. 
An example of Isharatul Nafs in the Quran is the text concerning the maintenance of the young children which provides it is his father's duty to provide them with maintenance and clothing according to custom. The explicit meaning of this test obviously determines that it is the father's duty to support his child. It is also understood from the wording of the text, especially from the use of the pronoun, lahu, his, that only the father and no one else bears this obligation. This much is easily detectable and constitutes the explicit meaning of this text. But to say that the child's descent is solely attributed to the father and that his identity is determined with reference to that of the father is a rational and concomitant meaning that is derived through further investigation of the signs detectable in the text. Okay, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ala al-mawludi lahu, for the one that the baby is born to, this means that the, the person is called after his father, not his mother. Okay, and then we have, next page, we have several examples also. You need to, to read all of them, understand them. Next, page 171. Inferred meaning? Yes. Okay. This is a meaning that is derived from the spirit and rationale of a legal text, even where, there, where this is not indicated in its word and sentences. <laughs> Unlike the explicit meaning and the alluded meaning, which are both indicated in the words and signs of the text, the inferred meaning is not indicated in this way. Instead, it is derived through analogy and the identification of an effective cause, illa, which is common between the explicit meaning and the meaning that is derived through inference. This might explain why some ulama have equated the lala, the lala to nafs with anal analogical deduction, namely qiyas jali. jali. We have qiyas jali. What's the meaning of qiyas jali? Obvious analogy. This is obvious, because usually when we make analogy, now if you wanted to say, smoking cigarettes is forbidden. Why? We need to make analogy. Or, uh, drugs, why they are forbidden? Because just like alcohol is forbidden, drugs are forbidden. And actually drugs should be forbidden at the first place, because they are more dangerous. So this is not a difficult qiyas. Sometimes when you make analogy, you need to check, is the cause the same? Are they equal in the reason? So they are equal in the ruling. But sometimes it is so obvious. So this is one of them. That's what we call qiyas jali. Obvious qiyas, obvious analogy. It doesn't require that much. When Allah says, this word is forbidden to be said to the parents, that means definitely abuse them physically or verbally is also forbidden. That's qiyas jali. To illustrate this, we may refer to the Quranic text on the obligation to respect one's parents. In particular, the text provides and say not fi to them, which obviously forbids the utterance of the slightest words of contempt to parents. The effective cause of this prohibition, prohibition is honoring parents and avoiding offense to them. There are, of course, other forms of offensive behavior besides a mere contemptuous word such as fi, to which the effective cause of this prohibition would apply. The inferred meaning of this test is thus held to be that all forms of abusive words and acts which offend parents are forbidden even if they are not specifically mentioned in the text under consideration. Okay. Is this clear? Online, are these four steps, four levels of textual implications clear? So we have first, ibaratun nas. Then we have, isharatun nas. Then we have Dalalatun Nas. This is the third one. And now we will move to the fourth one. Next one, this is the fourth level, is Iqtida'un Nas. Iqtida'un Nas. What do we mean by Iqtida'un Nas? A meaning on which the text itself is silent. Now it is not mentioned, but must be read into it. You have to apply it. Otherwise, the text itself won't be correct or won't stand. This is what we call iqtida'un nas, yaqtadih. Now, it's not mentioned, but you have automatically to accept it. And this is different than the levels that we mentioned before. An example for this. 
And this is not, I, I don't think this is mentioned in the book. What's mentioned in the book is similar thing. Forbidden unto you, your mothers. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ Your mothers are forbidden. Your daughters are forbidden. Your aunts, and so on and so forth. What's اقتداء النصير? You have to accept a meaning that is omitted, but is understood necessarily from the, from the text. What do we mean by this? Could someone tell me? A very smart, intelligent student. Um, obviously if you're very good, Alia. Mashallah. Okay. Forbidden what? What is forbidden? Forbidden in marriage. Marriage. Is marriage mentioned? No. You have to accept it. Otherwise, what does it mean? It doesn't make any sense. Marriage is forbidden. Oh, it's mentioned in the book. You got it from the book, Alia? Good. Another example. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَ Forbidden unto you, again, the same thing. The dead carcass. What's, what's forbidden? Eating it. Eating or marriage? Eating. Can you, can you, can you apply marriage here? No. But what is forbidden of the meta? Eating it. This meaning that you have to accept, that's what we call اقتضاء nas That you have to accept it. Another example. رفع عن أمتي الخطأ والنسيان وما استكره عليه Error, forgetfulness and being forced are lifted from my ummah. Do you know this hadith? رفع عن أمتي الخطأ والنسيان وما استكره عليه That's the exact text. رفع عن أمتي رفع means lifted. So where is اقتضاء النصير? What's the meaning that you have to apply? That is omitted. رفع عن أمتي. They are not punished for the burden. Okay, you have to be accurate. The actions are lifted. That's not correct. No, the sin is lifted. The sin f for error or for forgetfulness. That's what you mean. Okay, again, read the text one more time. Error. Forgetfulness are lifted. If that's literally what it means, that means the Prophet ﷺ said something wrong. Because literally it means error is lifted. That means there is no error. That means no Muslim will do any error. While we know that many people are making mistakes. No one will forget. While we know as a human you will forget. That's the literal meaning. But that's not the meaning of the text. You have to apply something. So either we say the ithm is lifted رَفِعًا أُمَّتِي الإثم or المؤاخذة the burden that's what we call اقتضاء النص that's what we call اقتضاء النص is it clear? you understand the examples? okay read page 172 Required meaning, iqtada an nafs. This is a meaning on which the text itself is silent and yet which must be read into it if it is to fulfill its proper objective. To give an example, the Quran proclaims concerning the prohibited degrees of relations in marriage unlawful to you are your mothers and your daughters. This text does not mention the word marriage, but even so, this must be read into the text to complete its meaning. Similarly, we read elsewhere in the Qur'an, unlawful to you are the dead carcass and the blood, without mentioning that these are unlawful for consumption. But the text requires that the missing element to be supplied in order that it may convey a complete meaning. Okay, could you give me another example other than these examples and the examples that we mentioned in the book? There are many examples and we mentioned them in the class.
Without examples, you won't understand usul al-fiqh very well. The Prophet ﷺ said, La salata. What does it mean? La salata. There is no prayer. Liman lam yaqra bi fatihat al-kitab. What does it mean? There is no prayer. He already prayed. Either you say no complete prayer or no accepted prayer. That's what we call iqtida on nas. Here, the next example, read it. This is very similar. Um, to give a slightly different example of iqtida on nas, we may refer to the hadith which states, there is no fast, la sayyama, for anyone who has... The same thing, there is no fasting. Not intended for the night before. For the one who did not intend fasting from the night before. What does it mean? He already fasted. He abstained from food and drink. But his fasting is not accepted. His fasting is not sufficient. لا تتخذ اليهود والنصارى أولياء No, here you don't need to apply any omitted meaning. إنما الأعمال بالنيات Okay, what does it mean? إنما الأعمال بالنيات Actions are by intentions. Actions by intentions. What do we apply here? What اقتضاء النص? The reward of actions. Yes, that's a good example. Very good. Okay, so these examples are clear now. Now, whenever you read a text, try to see. Because each text has levels. It definitely has... Ibaratun nas. Does it have ishara? Does it have indication? Does it have mafhum, muwafaqa? Or qiyas jali? Or very obvious qiyas? Does it have iqtida? You have to apply something. From now on, that's your job. Every time you read an ayah, this is the practice that you need to do. That they're living in like the... Ahya. Do not think not of the martyrs as dead, but rather they are alive yeah, but with not, their Lord. Yeah, so uh, they're not alive in that the sense that we would think of being alive. That's them. not no. because it says they are alive with their Lord. So you understand from it that this is, you may say, ishara. This is indication that they are not living like our life. But that's not iqtida. Okay. Because it's still valid meaning. Because Allah said they are alive. If Allah said they are alive, and at the beginning He said they are, think not of them are dead, as we know that they are already dead, then yes, your example is okay. okay. But since Allah said with their Lord, okay. so there is no need to add anything. That's what we may say, ishara. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ What do you mean? Okay, what's the example? This is the book, no doubt. You don't need to add anything. What do you want to add? Again, here, the meaning does not stand. The sentence itself, you have to accept something in it. What's the ishara? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Ishara that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from Allah. Yes, that's a good example if you say this. But again, we want examples for practical rulings. Not for like beliefs, atiqad. We want for practical rulings because that's what we focus here in Usul al-Fiqh. Okay, any questions? Okay, هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى صحبه أجمعين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.